So when it comes to the anatomy of the heart, the important thing to keep in mind, and here's a pretty cool image, is the orientation of everything. Right ventricle is forward, closest to the sternum. Here you have an image, shows you the sternum, and it's labeled everything for you, very nice. And what you'll notice also right here is that the left atrium is the closest um, kind of towards the back, to the aorta, to the esophagus, that kind of stuff. And so this is important um, for a, a couple reasons that they're gonna test you on. First of all, uh, this right here, hoarseness. And they're gonna ask you, you know, what can be causing it? Well, you gotta think of it. Well, it's gonna be the left atrium. The reason why, you have the recurrent, on the left recurrent uh, laryngeal nerve, part of the vagus nerve, going around that area damage it either through enlargement here and you're going to have hoarseness. Here's an important thing that they're going to test you on. They're not just going to say, oh, what's going to happen with the enlargement of the left atrium? What they're going to say is they're going to tell you that someone has mitral stenosis. Or they might not even do that. They might have you listen to uh, a murmur. Um, or they might tell you, hey, look at the pressures in the different parts of the heart. And you're going to have to see Mm, you might have mitral stenosis here. Okay, And so you end up having enlargement of the left atrium. Why? It's one of those Le Chatelier principle things, you know, where you have a stress on the system, and so the system acts to counteract you know, that, that stressor. So in this case, if you have stenosis of the mitral valve, you know, things are harder to, to get through, well, then everything before it is going to get, you know, super jacked up to push everything through. You're going to have enlargement of this left atrium to kind of counteract or to bypass or to, or, or to count, I guess counteract is a better way of saying it, to counteract the effect of the increased pressure or the increased difficulty of going through the mitral valve. All right, so this Ortner syndrome here. Um, the name, I don't think it's as important as just understanding the mechanism. So we went through that. That was pretty cool. And of course, the right ventricle. Uh, it's the most an anterior part of the heart. Most commonly injured in trauma. Why is that? Well, if you get a baseball bat hit against your sternum, you know this is going to be the part that receives the most direct impact. All right. <coughs> Pericardium, three layers. Uh, you know this. All right. Uh, you know that between the, the here right, pericardial cavities, between the visceral and the parietal, um, everything's innervated by the, the phrenic nerve. This is actually pretty important. Um, one of the reasons is because of referred pain from pericarditis. Uh, you would assume, oh, pericarditis, well, it's just the heart, oh, I'm going to have heart pain. Uh, you know, you'd think so, but, but not always. It's kind of like when you have... Um, you know, uh, splenic pain, you can also have referred pain, you know, not just the spleen, you can have it in the shoulder and stuff. Um, and, and the reason here for uh, pericarditis causing referred pain is because you have the phrenic nerve uh, sharing similar nerves with the supraclavicular nerves, which would explain referred pain, you know, shoulders, and like in that area. Coronary blood supply. Ah! So here's something really important. Let's go this cool image right here. And here's kind of how I look at it. Now don't get me wrong, this is a very good image right here. Um, and for all intents and purposes, uh, superior to the one that I have uh, drawn at. However, I think this is a very uh, friendly way of looking at things. Left anterior descending, right coronary artery, and a certain flex right here. You can kind of see top, front, LAD. The back, RCA, side, LAC. And that's just the framework, the, the basic, uh, you know, the, what you want to start with to understand everything. But the important thing here, um, this is actually very dense, and there's a lot of cool stuff coming from here. And it would take way more than the 5, 10, whatever minutes this is going to take to go through everything. But there's almost always going to be a question on your exam about dominant circulation. Dominant circulation. Okay, so to go through dominant circulation, you kind of have to go through what is the PDA. Well, they have a label for you right here, the posterior descending artery. 
what does it do? It supplies the AV node. Huge. Huge, huge, huge. You're going to have some questions talking about AV block. Okay. And they're going to tell you this person has AV block. Maybe they'll show you uh, an EKG. Maybe they'll just tell you. Maybe they'll just say some sort of fluttering. Whatever. But you're going to have someone with uh, AV block. And they're going to say, you know, where's the issue here? Well, most people, it's going to be from the right coronary artery. However, they might drop in this person's left dominant. I've had questions where they just said left dominant. And I had to realize, oh, yeah, yeah, left dominant. That means it's coming from the, uh, from the left circumflex, not from the right coronary. And when I say it, I'm, of course, referring to the posterior descending artery. OK, so keep that in mind. This is very important. It looks it's just buried here in the middle of all this stuff, but got to keep it. Uh, got to keep it. Um, got to keep it there. Anyway, coronary blood flow uh, peaks in early diastole. Um, why is that? Well, because it's the opposite. Okay. Um, I guess I could go into more detail about this a little bit. Well, so during systole, right, or if you want to pronounce it as systole or diastole, whatever, um, what's going to end up happening is that when, you know, the heart, like, contracts, it's under high pressure. Uh, you know, anything when it contracts is kind of under higher pressure. And as a result, it's higher to get blood through those areas. So as a result, you can actually end up getting it when the heart is not contracting diastole lower pressure you can move blood through during that time it's kind of the opposite of what you would expect it's what we have here opposite peak but the reason has to do with the contraction and the pressure resulting from it <laughs>